Very good. Thank you, Dr. Musinski. That was sure. fantastic. Uh, we didn't have a similar talk last year, so I think that was very well received. Lots of questions. Uh, good. So um, our last item on the program, I'd like to ask uh, Julie and uh, Archmara to come on up, and uh, they have a few comments for us uh, today. Uh, patient and caregiver perspective for kidney cancer. Okay. I'm not good at talking, but I'll... I'll relate what I know or what I have, the experiences I have had. Um, but I've talked to quite a few of you out there and you've been through this similar thing that I have. Like I had bilateral tumors and uh, you know, it's just amazing how many other people have. Curious. Anyway, okay, so hi everybody. <laughs> um, I was diagnosed in 2000, so I'm a 16 year survivor. I've had three surgeries. Uh, I had a, a cryo surgery. That was my first one. And uh, the second one was a partial nephrectomy. And then I had a open partial nephrectomy with a rib removal. And trust me, that was more painful than the opening. Um, I don't think I'll go into too much detail about, you know, how far I've come and what has happened, because not a lot has happened. I've just had the surgeries and I haven't had to have treatment, and I feel really good. The only problems I'm having are bowel blockages due to all the scar tissue from all the surgeries that I had to have. <laughs> and that's about it. Um, the other part is we got interested in having um, some group meetings in Seattle, because when I first started, there was nothing. There was just the KCA, Kidney Cancer Association, and they came out here once a year and there were four or five people at the meeting. And we kept thinking, there's something wrong with this. So we got started with their help and we've been doing it for 12 years. So I think my husband wants to talk a little bit more about what I've left out or missed or something. <laughs> um, or, or I don't want to talk about. <laughs> You want to stay there? Yeah, got this oh, come on. Okay, um, first of all, show of hands, how many of you are caregivers? Um, almost half. Okay, um, I'm a caregiver, I'm not a kidney cancer patient. And that is a slightly different perspective on things. And for me, it started out, like she said, in 2000, oh. December 7th, I'll always remember, auspicious day. She went to her urologist after having had a CAT scan because her regular doctor had said, you need to see a urologist. Right. And I wasn't with her. I worked at Boeing. I had all kinds of meetings to attend, and I figured she'd take care of herself and probably kidney stones. She came home. She said she had kidney cancer. And what did they tell you, Julie? Uh, they told me to go see a urologist and that I might have about... Um, two years to live if I didn't have my kidney removed. So she came home and I came home from work and I said, what? All of a sudden, everything had changed. And so I started looking at this 18 to 24 months. That's not very long. Uh, probably the next day or a couple days later, I went into one of the senior managers at work and I said, you know, I think I'm gonna have to retire early. So I'm gonna have to stay home and take care of my wife here for the next two years. And uh, they were real accommodating, and they managed to uh, let me take time off when I had to support her in her surgeries. And literally, there were times when I had to lift her out of the bed so that she could get out to the bathroom, things of that sort. Right. So I was able to work from home. I was able to actually help her through some of the hard physical stuff. Then you get to the mental stuff. Anybody running into that yet? Yeah, caregivers. You have a real role to play in helping get through that mental stuff. So for us, part of it was attending those first couple of meetings here in Seattle, down at a hotel near SeaTac, where there weren't very many people, but we got connected with the Kidney Cancer Association and a few local people that had been going through this for a while. They convinced us to go back to one of the national meetings back in Washington, D.C., where we met a whole lot of kidney cancer people, patients and caregivers. And that really 
gave you just a huge boost in your confidence. You were feeling a whole lot better after that. So that one thing led to another. We ended up going to, I think we actually, they sent us back there to help lobby Congress and all kinds of stuff. Uh, at that time, we were trying to find something specific that would solve the kidney cancer problem. They've subsequently changed, and now they're saying there are drugs working for cancer. Can they work on solid tumors like kidney? That's where a lot of what we have seen coming through in the last few years has come from. In 2000, the only things that you saw the doctor tell you, the only things that were out there were interferon alpha and IL-2. IL-2 was uh, approved in only 1992. And one of the people that we have been seeing at our cancer meetings that we hold here at Seattle Cancer Care Alliance is a 25-year survivor of that initial IL-2 trial. And she had stage four cancer so bad that it broke her, her collarbone, a huge tumor. So that was one of the complete reversals. And we've seen more of that. We've seen a lot of people that have had a lot of remarkable recoveries from this kidney cancer scourge. We've also seen some that haven't made it. But by and large, when they get together in a meeting like this one here, like the ones that we hold about four or five times a year, and they start talking to each other, we don't have pity parties. What we do is we do problem solving. We're trying to find out what can work, what has worked, what can you do for somebody else. And every time I come home from one of those things, Julie's pumped up. So as a caregiver, that makes me feel good. Does anybody have any questions that we can address? Question, yeah. when, are, when are the meetings? Well, they've been on a kind of a regular basis. Um, we were supposed to have one in June, but we went to a uh, youngest grandson's high school graduation in Montana, Helena, Montana. And after the graduation, one o'clock in the morning, Julie had a bowel blockage. So off to the hospital in the ambulance and three days in the hospital, which kind of submarined our meeting for June. So we, we hold on about four or five times a year, and if you put your email address on that sign-up sheet out at the desk, we're gonna put you on our list, and you'll see when we're having our next meeting. I expect we'll have one towards the latter part of September. September. Won't have one in August, because I'm a Dahlia grower and shower, and every weekend in August is taken up by the shows. So we do that about he four He grows times a year. 700 plants. <laughs> Other questions? Julie didn't tell you about the genetic aspect, but when she was first diagnosed with the bilateral tumors and things in her lungs and her pancreas, they were thinking about von Hippel Lindau disease, very genetic. And uh, we actually went back to the um, National Institutes of Health and, the Ameri and they tested her for an entire week to try and determine whether this was a VHL situation. In her case, they were never able to prove that it was. They also were never able to prove that it wasn't. So that's part of the frustrating part of the genetics that maybe you did or didn't catch from the talk. Yeah, totally. 